So I do apologize for the lack of videos. That was my depression. That being said, today we're gonna be doing a Kenshi inspired solo beep run. There's a new Kenshi race mod on the Steam Workshop and this is a Kenshi character who was outcasted from his hive for being defective. And we're just gonna say that means he has no traits, he has zero in all of his skills, which beep does start with one in all his skills. And there already was a Kenshi race mod, but from what I understood, they did not alter the stats of the characters in any way, but this mod does. So it said that hive worker drones get less construction speed. That's what they said on the Steam Workshop shop anyways but they actually get more they get quite a bit more plant work speed at 250 percent and their mining speed is also increased at 150 percent they also move slightly quicker than normal colonists at 5.2 the soldier drones can only wear certain head pieces i think the worker drones can wear any though and i believe they have less hp on their body parts hopefully we won't be finding that out anytime soon anyways and the map we're going to be starting on looks somewhat similar to the kenshi map of vein the homeland to the western hive and it's got three of these giant toxic mushrooms that if you get too close to them you get poisoned a little bit and hopefully we're going to be able to make good use of these things on our day one raid which is coming well on day one it's currently day 0 0.02 so we got some time to prepare and the main thing we're going to do to prepare is start mining out some of this compacted steel to make walls out of with zero mining it is going to take them quite a while to get really any steel out of this but hopefully by day one we should have mined out a few of these at least and we did actually just get up to one mining so that's going to be really helpful we didn't actually start with zero skill completely in all of our skills i don't think there's a way to do that you're always going to have a random number in your skill and also the character started with more than zero shooting. I had to use a mod to lower it down to zero. And same with planting as well. So when we do any shooting or planting, we're gonna get up to one skill with that, like the second we start doing it. Other than that though, we are actually gonna have zero in all of our skills. And man, that is some pretty bad yield. We got 26 steel from the first compacted steel. Since we have one mining though now, we'll get a bit more from the second one. But yeah, we're gonna need more steel than that to make a defense. Or let's just say we're gonna be doing a lot of running on day one. And already halfway through day one, our wealth has skyrocketed as we did just pick up some steel. We're now gonna have Beep make walls out of it and we're gonna try to funnel the raider into this mushroom down here, which this warg is actually sitting inside. If you sit inside the purple area, you start getting toxic buildup and if you get any closer, you start getting a bunch of cuts. I will say the cuts don't do that much. They only do like one damage, but they do start adding up and crap, Beep just dropped some of the steel. Too close to this toxic mushroom. I don't know if we wanna have him get toxic buildup to retrieve that. I don't know why he dropped it there, but oh well, it's just a loss of five steel, which is okay. And yeah, I only saw him botch one wall there's a 25 percent chance for him to botch the wall and we lose some steel by doing that walls only do cost five steel each though so it's not that bad if we botch a wall if we botch the door then it's really bad and yeah i do want to build a door we don't have to build a door we are almost two-thirds of the way through day one though so we're not gonna have that much time to mine out more steel and the thing is we're only getting like 26 steel per node so if we botch this door i don't know if we're gonna have time to mine out another node he is also pretty hungry as well so we're gonna have him cut some berries he did cut those really fast too if we're only having one planting because again he gets 250 percent plant work speed and now we're going to see if he can build the door without botching we do only have 0.12 days left so it's really important that we cannot botch this and we did not botch fantastic we're gonna let beep rest for like an hour or so oh and the raid's here okay and it's a raid from the east side over here the Turian militants are attacking us. This dude has a sawed off shotgun, which is kind of surprising they're sending someone with a gun because yeah, our wealth is extremely low. At 332 wealth, that is just insanely low. Do also keep in mind though, we are getting raided every day. We're also getting a trader every day and we got a mining goods trader today, which is, should not probably help us too much. I guess it's just time to wait for this raider to attack us and they are attacking us. We're gonna beat, pick up the berries and we're gonna have them just run to the west a little bit. <laughs> Actually, we'll let him get a little bit more rest. And yeah, here comes the raider. He's about to take a little bit of toxic and he only got cut once and he got a crack on his left radius. But yeah, he only got 5% toxic buildup, not that much. Like it's not super broken or anything. We're gonna have to kite him through it again. But yeah, these mushroom placements aren't super amazing for like an early game kiting strategy. We're gonna have to figure out a way to kite them through this other one as well. We're probably just gonna need to mine out some more steel. And yeah, we were able to use a door to get through this side and he had to walk through the mushroom again, which did not give him any more toxic. And these boars are just getting owned by the toxic, by the way. I think this entire herd is about to die. The problem is that when they do die to the toxic buildup, they start rotting immediately. And like this cassowary only had serious toxic buildup, but it still started rotting. So yeah, I think there's nothing we can do with these boars and the warg also died to the toxic. But yeah, that's kind of rough. We're just kiting this guy around for a long time. He does have 33% toxic buildup, but the problem is we're not getting any time to kind of relax before the next raid. Thankfully, Beep does not have any mental break or this would be disastrous. We're just gonna let him do a little resting actually. Yeah, I should have actually been doing that a while ago. Like I have him on rest full time and this dude is pretty slow now. He's got moderate toxic buildup and it's actually up to serious now. 
So he's moving pretty slow. Oh, and it looks like they're giving up and they're leaving. And okay, after that raid, we just let Beep rest for a little while. And we're going to get a raid again in three hours. But his rest meter is almost full, which is great. We could actually make him a bed too out of these mushrooms. We can cut down the mushrooms. Never mind actually on that. We need leather to make a bed roll out of. We don't have the tech for really anything right now, let alone complex furniture like beds. And there are a lot of animals around here that we could skin for leathers. Unfortunately, they are all rotting. And all right, day two's raid is going to be by a guy again with a gun, Septirius. The dude is going to be attacking right away. He is walking through some toxic mushroom. So he already has 5% toxic buildup, which is great. And he's going to walk through this one as well. And he's up to 9.8%. Very nice. Yeah, it's just going to be ring around the posy yet again with this guy. His hand cannon does have quite a bit of range though. So we got to watch out for that. And today's trader is a mad scientist trader. Again, not something that we can really trade with. That's one of the worst ones, I think. Yeah, Beep is going to... Oh, we got an animal transport pod crash. A crate with a mega sloth. Wait, is that uh what I'm thinking it is? Okay, freaking mega sloth just crashed in. And if we save this thing, which we have quite a while to save it, there is a chance it could join us. Thank you, Perry Persistent. Our storyteller is Perry Persistent. I don't know if I talked about how I'm playing on 500% threat. Maybe I'll just flash the settings that we're playing on on the screen right now. The only thing I've changed is colonist ins kill down to zero and 500% threat. Everything else is standard settings. But yeah, we're gonna hope Septerius succumbs to his toxic fate or he decides to run before the 16 hours is up and that thing bleeds out and he actually ran right through the mushroom that time he got a lot of toxic buildup a lot of scratches it would actually be really nice to have one of these guys get knocked out okay these guys are giving up and leaving very nice but yeah, it looks like we're not gonna be able to kill any of the raiders this way i was kind of hoping we could kill them using the mushroom situation but yeah beep is gonna stabilize this thing up with probably a terrible tend 18 percent i don't think we have to rescue it and like bring it to a animal bed but we will anyways and we put a animal sleep Sleeping spot over here. I would put it over here near where we're trying to build our main base area, but I think Beep would probably walk through this toxic mushroom. So yeah, we're gonna make it its own little room over here. And we'll use a little bit of our precious steel to wall it in, I guess. But yeah, our next project is gonna be to mine out some more steel so we can wall in the mega sloth so no predators eat it. Okay, at 3 a.m. we are done. The mega sloth is no, it got up. That's really bad because it might walk through the toxic mushroom and it did not join us by the way. It could still decide to join us, but yeah, we're going to hope that it doesn't walk through the toxic mushroom. I think if it does decide to join you though, it will join you right away. So maybe we just got unlucky there. So androids can take damage from the mushrooms, but they're immune to the toxic. So this is going to be kind of brutal. I will say tier one androids are really slow though. So it's going to be very easy to kite, but yeah, it's going to be pretty annoying. We're going to be kiting this thing around for quite a while. It's actually pretty good because we're getting construction skill. Not much though for repairing. We got another animal transport pod crash. A mega spider is crashing in. So I did read that the chance for these to join you is based on their wildness. That was somebody's theory. Mega sloths are extremely wild, 97%. And mega spiders are as well. They're at 95, so I'm pretty sure this thing's not gonna join us. We got a mad rat. Okay, that's actually really good. That will go for this dude, I think. Didn't actually take any toxic buildup damage too, which is actually kind of good. He did one shot it though. But yeah, the robot's way over here. We're gonna beep come over here and stabilize up this mega spider. Do keep in mind, I've not added any extra events like more animal transfer pod crashes or anything like that. Perry Persistent is just sending these in and he's trying to give us a pet animal, but he's not sending us in very friendly animals. So I think he's kind of just toying with us here. And our raid today is by Raven, the tribes person. What is nice about this guy? Well, he's physically adept. That's not nice. That is gonna increase his movement speed slightly. But since he has no armor, he's gonna take a lot of damage from the toxic mushroom. Oh, we got a space battle. <laughs> okay. Dude, Perry is being crazy with these events. Like, this is kind of nuts, I will say. Lyrian just got dropped in. Somehow did not get knocked unconscious. I've actually never seen that before. Like, out of the 20 people I've seen drop in from space battles, I've never seen one walk away from their crash. And that's actually kind of unfortunate, too, because if he was knocked out, we'd at least be able to strip him for his gear, which jellyfish people usually don't have that much gear. Another thing I will say that's nice about this space battle is there's going to be these ship chunks dropping in that we could deconstruct. And this Glitter World Trader actually might want to buy some of this stuff. So let's actually start deconstructing these ship chunks. We're about to get raided. And yeah, ship chunk did almost hit that dude. I'm pretty sure they cannot hit Beep though. Like I'm almost certain that there's no chance that falling objects can't hit your colonists. I think they're like kind of immune to stuff like that. And yeah, Raven did get a little bit toxic, which is nice. It's going to slow him to way below Beep's movement speed. 
And crap, we're gonna have to stop deconstructing that, which we're gonna have to just redo that whole thing, I think. Pretty sure when you're deconstructing something, you lose all the progress if you stop the deconstruction process. Oh, here we go, we gotta do knocked out. He does have 81 silver on him too and a simple meal. Can't really do anything with the simple meal. I mean, Beep can have no chance of food poisoning today. But he has a gun too with ammo in it. Okay, that's epic. We're gonna equip the gun. Strip him of his gear. We could rescue him as well. There's another person that got knocked out over here. He had a heavier machine pistol. Okay, this is kind of cheap, actually. I mean, it is what it is. Like, the storyteller in this game sends you events, and sometimes you get epic ones. As far as is this guy any good, he is physically adept. If we could capture this guy, we could actually sell him off for quite a bit, or we would actually like him to join us. Definitely Dodger is a good combo with physically adept, and since he's ugly, he'd fit right into our colony. If we capture him, we'd have to recruit him as a prisoner, and that would take forever because Beep has really bad social Impact. He has zero social skill and hive worker drones get 20% less social impact. That's another caveat with hivers. They suck at doing social stuff. But yeah, I think Beep is actually just going to pop a cap in Raven. He's going to try. I just say pop a cap because it just, I don't know, it seems funny that Beep would be popping a cap in anything really. I think that's how Beep would say it. Like I'm going to pop a cap in you or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, we hit this guy pretty good. He's going to bleed out in seven hours. I would like to actually just keep kiting him around and wait for him to bleed out. We could capture this guy who, yeah, they're both physically adept. That increases their cell value by quite a bit. And we could actually do a caravan. Well, actually, we can't do a caravan because I made it so we are hostile with everyone because yeah, everyone hates Beep. We could maybe sell him off to like a trader though, not this one. The Glitter World Trader does have some pretty high tier stuff, some nice animals as well, but I don't think they'll buy prisoners. And we got another dude that's unconscious over here. A bunch of ship chunks as well. I believe we get quite a few components for these and we could probably sell those components over to this trader. This dude Raven is not wanting to go down though. He's going to go down pretty soon though. He's only got four hours left. We should start working on his prisoner cell. We're going to really hope that we do not botch this door. So yeah, that's all of our steel. And very nice we did not botch it. Good job, Beep. When this compacted seal is actually almost mined out. So yeah, we got a prisoner cell for Raven when he does go down momentarily. Dude's sticking it out like a champ though. He's only got three hours left. It don't go down. Robert, it goes down. No, it don't. It do go down. Oh! And there he goes. He finally went down. See, I'm remembered when raiders go down, there's a really high chance that they die. But when it comes to blood loss, if you just kite them around and they get knocked out with blood loss, there's, from what I know, no chance that they actually die from that. But yeah, the dude's only got two hours left. We might not be able to save him. This guy over here actually has three. From what I can see, he's not especially good. Like, Quick Sleeper seems like his only good traits. He does have some gear, though, that we would like to strip from him. Oh, and this guy is actually just getting up and walking out of here which really sucks if we want to arrest him there's only a 60 percent chance part of me is thinking that we should try because what if he doesn't have that much resist and we could just recruit him then what about this guy he has 12 resist raven is not as good though as this dude like he's clumsy which makes him uncoordinated and he can get random scrapes animal aficionado though is actually pretty good increases team and train animal chance by quite a bit but yeah raven has 11 hours left i think we will go to try to arrest this guy over here and if he does decide to resist arrest he might get a hit off on beep which could be kind of bad and Okay, nice. He is going peacefully. Yeah, that was kind of risky, I will say. Oh, and Raven got an infection. He's probably going to die from that, to be honest. Well, this guy over here, Max Apias, only has 0.3 hours left. And we're not going to be able to strip his equipment before he bleeds out, which is unfortunate. And yeah, this room is very dirty. We're going to have Beep try to just clean it up. It actually is clean after just doing one clean. It went from two dirtiness, which is a ton. Okay, then it spiked back up to very dirty just by having one bleed or something. I don't even know if there's any point of tending Raven up. Like, I think he's going to die from this infection pretty much no matter what. Although physically adept actually does increase his immunity gain speed, so maybe he won't die from it. If we made him a bed as well, that would really help. We could make him a bed out of some of these dead people. Before we do that, though, we probably want to make a butcher table or we'd be wasting a lot of the leather. And we're going to have to chop down quite a few mushrooms before we do that. So first we're just going to bandage up Raven and we bandage up most of his injuries, but it's now 3 a.m. And Beep has not rested or eaten yet. We'll let him eat this simple meal. These guys are also pretty hungry too. We should probably feed them. I believe if you're malnourished, your immunity gain speed does go down as well. So you're going to feed Raven most of our berries. Cut this bush as well. And here comes our next raid by some Turian militants. So he's got a freaking SMG. Like, what is with these dudes? They're massive guns. And okay, so the raider's down here. He's preparing for a while, then attacking. And we did get a bulk goods trader. What I'm hoping here is we can buy some material that we can make a butcher table out of. Or what we could actually do is deconstruct some of these ship chunks. So we should have time to deconstruct one of these before the raider gets to us. And okay, the Turian militants are beginning their assault. But yeah, we'll have time to deconstruct this. And we got eight components from that. These guys will buy that. We should have to put in our home area. They might also buy some 
guns or something that was dropped by the raiders. The trader will unfortunately not buy guns though. I tried dropping the combat handgun. They would have bought gear if we were able to strip that guy's gear, but unfortunately I was not quick enough. I'll buy these bear berries though. And yeah, all these components for 161 silver. These guys do also have some animals, like maybe a wolfhound would be a good investment. They can do combat a little bit. If we sell them off pretty much all of our steel, we could afford a wolfhound. We want the one with the best genetics. This female by far is the best genetics as far as DPS is concerned. And yeah, maybe we just won't sell them off all the steel just enough so that we can afford the wolfhound and maybe we actually should have waited to buy the wolfhound until we dealt with this raider because the raider is barely slower than the wolfhound and this can be tricky to micro the wolfhound around to avoid the raider and yeah it's down here it's almost getting caught by this dude which is surprising because the dude is slower than it we're gonna have beep just try to get some shots off with his semi-rifle oh crap we're getting in this guy's range like how is this even happening the guy is slower by a considerable amount he's moving at 4.6 beep is moving well he was moving a little bit slower but he's moving at 5.2 now because he was running and gunning but okay the wolfhound did not get hit thankfully it's not running the toxic that actually could have been really bad if people got tagged at all that would have been disastrous potentially but yeah we just sent the wolfhound into the prisoner cell and it should be fine one thing we could also do is try to piss off this mega spider there's a 7.5 percent chance of transport pod crash literally right on top of okay it's a enemy raider dude is a field medic which increases medical ability oh it's a vorkin so he will actually heal up his injuries he will not die from those he might actually be able to just walk those injuries off he is in extreme pain though so he's in pain shock i'm not sure how that whole thing's gonna work once he does heal himself we got another raid. Okay, this is from Perry because it's 15 hours. They're from different factions. Hopefully they're at war with each other. This guy's a Chaos Mage too, which is actually really scary. Chaos Mages have random abilities and the AI does have the ability to cast pretty much anything, I think, with that. Are these guys not at war with each other though? That would be kind of tragic if they're not. Oh, they're actually fighting the dude who, yeah, he got up and then he's dead. They're not at war with each other. They're actually talking to each other, really? That's really unlucky. Like, it's not very often I feel that you, oh, they're actually talking. Oh, what's on your mind? And then he's like, I'm soaking wet. So yeah, I got a new dialogue mod that people will actually talk about what's happening with them. Instead of the old one where like they would just talk about just random quotes and stuff. It's a fairly new dialogue mod that I think they did a really good job with that. But yeah, this is really bad luck. We might activate our trap card with the mega sloth. The thing is still up. It's it is healing pretty good though and it's moving at 90% now so maybe we don't do that because it's going to be moving barely slower than beep at 5.1 and once it does heal up i think it's going to be moving just at the same speed as him so raven our prisoner's infection is now extreme at 80 percent he will die if it gets to 100 before his immunity but his immunity is at 83 the only problem though right now is he's about to be starving and okay the turians are giving up and they're fleeing this guy though i don't think is going to give up flawless i think is going to keep going oh and there's his chaos mage ability that would have been tragic if it hit beep. And we got the achievement. Gain immunity when infection is on 99%. He actually was at 99%. Wow, that's crazy. If it would have got to 100, he would have died. I really wanted to tend up his infection, but it's too risky, I think, with this Chaos Mage. Like, you saw that Fireball thing he casted, and he can cast, I think, pretty much anything at really long range, too. So it's just a really unfortunate situation overall, pretty much. But yeah, it's 5 a.m. I almost guarantee this guy's going to leave right when our next raid comes. Like, I just have the feeling that that's what's going to happen. Yep, they're giving up and leaving right when the... Oh no, we're getting raided by the Orion installation. This is really bad. They're attacking immediately from the northwest. He's moving at 8.6 because he has an Orion exoskeleton, which increases movement by 80%. Why are we getting raided by the Orion installation when we have 4,000 wealth? How do we even have 4,000 wealth, by the way? I guess some guns around the map and stuff. Dude, this is brutal. The only thing that's going to save us here is if the raiders run into each other. One thing I did just realize is since Flawless is running, he will not cast any spells. He will use grenade launcher on us, but we should be able to avoid the grenades. Yeah, he's aiming his grenade launcher. I'm not too worried about it though. Yeah, that was not even close. So we're going to really hope that this guy is going to aggro on the Orion installation guy. The raider. Yeah, they're at war with each other. Okay, this is perfect. They're going to fight each other. I'm pretty sure Boxen is going to rip this guy up though because the implant that he has, the Orion exoskeleton, does actually do damage. Quite a bit of damage. It's quite broken. Yeah, we're going to just try to take some pot shots at this guy. Oh, he casted a shield, which is really good. The paladin shield ability. And yeah, it would actually be amazing if we were able to knock out Boxen and we could sell him or make him join us. And she actually is injured really good. Her movement's down to 125%. She is still quicker than Beep though. Oh, we knocked. 
no way no freaking way we just knocked out an amazing person from the orion installation what we could try to knock this guy out too if we want to be super greedy about it he just cast another shield on himself okay we're just gonna let him get out we're not gonna be too greedy about this whole thing we're just gonna mine out some more space in our prisoner cell because we need to do that right yeah i think we need to do that it does not take much time to mine out this slate though we should be able to do it really fast definitely before boxing gets up i think i'm kind of scared that boxing is just gonna get up randomly so i'm gonna put another sleeping spot down after i deconstructed that one and yeah let's just oh no we can't actually capture boxing well yeah we can i made it so this was not a prisoner cell and i deconstructed the sleeping spots and i put them back down and yeah hopefully we can get back out here before boxing gets back up which i don't see actually yeah i probably should have done that earlier because boxing definitely could have got back up they didn't have any blood loss or anything and like say she was just barely in pain shock and like her injury healed slightly back up to the point where she wasn't in pain shock anymore and got up that would have been tragic but yeah boxing does have 36 resist that is a ton of resist we will use the medicine on her as she only has one bleeding injury that's the only one that can get infected and if we get a good 10 on it there's a really low chance it gets infected which like even using good medicine we're probably gonna get a crap 10 with beeps medical skill yeah 51 percent it's not terrible not great but yeah we'll continue mining out the slates so we can make one more spot for a prisoner sleeping spot and now we need to get these guys up some beds so i was noticing these dropped in raiders are gonna start spoiling soon so it is kind of imperative that we get a butcher table set up which i think we will try to make out of giant mushrooms because we do have pretty good plant cutting and we actually cut these really fast yeah 23 mushroom stalks from that okay this is gonna be very easy i think all right let's see how much mushroom stalks we got from cutting down those four mushrooms it's not gonna be enough for sure but there was some more oh right here 16 that's actually gonna get us close to the 95 we need for a butcher table we just need 10 more and this mushroom should definitely do it now the question is are we gonna get the 20 percent chance to botch and be very unlucky here this place is really ugly i wish i didn't have to look at this anymore oh that's really cool it kind of reminds you too of like stuff that you need to work on oh nice we didn't botch this by the way yeah wait where are you going to butcher stuff no we don't want to butcher up animal corpses there's some perfectly good human-like corpse over here that you can butcher up. And yeah, we should have enough time for these three guys for sure. This dude's got 10 hours. He's the most likely to spoil soon. Over here to the west, though, there are quite a few more guys that like have 13 hours, 14, 14 on this person. And then a Revian over here who has 12. Another hive worker who has 51 pemmican, actually. And yeah, all these guys have like food on them and stuff, medicine on this person. Dude actually had a hatchet too, which helps plant work speed a little bit. 33% more with that, so that's nice. But yeah, after butchering up these bodies, we should bring this Put your table over towards those bodies. And by the way, how's Beep doing on rest? Oh, it's really bad. On the bright side though, those raids were really quick and it's only 3 p.m. So we're gonna have a lot of time before our next raid to just kind of do whatever, mainly butcher up people. This person that we're about to butcher up did have a Alliance pistol, which is a really good pistol. It does require spacer ammo, but it did have like 45 spacer ammo in it. Let's let him actually consume a fine meal just to boost his mood. We should probably bring these into the prisoner room too, just to help their moods. And Beep did get enough rest. We're gonna actually give them one of our beds but yeah let's try to build some more beds before we get raided even though we're literally getting raided in one hour so i doubt we're going to be able to get much progress on that we do have enough human leather and then we have i think we actually butchered up two drills yeah we have 76 drill leather 133 human leather the human leather alone actually is going to be more than enough to build the three beds and we're getting raided by krogans oh no we got a slave ship though. We could potentially get some massive profit off these guys. Yep, we could be rich. So who do we want to sell? I think Raven and this person are kind of replaceable. Like yeah, they're physically adept, but I believe this race cannot wear clothing, at least like not normal clothing. I will say the problem with trying to recruit Boxen is she has really high resist, but I think we're still definitely gonna want to recruit her because that Orion exoskeleton is just so good. And these guys actually have some slaves themselves. So this guy, Savicius, is physically adept as well. What's with all these people and being physically adept and then we got another hive worker drone who is actually a paladin but can't really fight or really do anything that well paladin is a pretty good class so like it can do healing and then it's got a shield i will say the thing that's really good about rakayuma the paladin hive worker drone is that i made it so all the caster classes increase market value by four times but hivers have a really low base value of 500 only so his value is not that high i think it'd probably be worth it just to have a paladin around because yeah they can heal i believe Believe. I haven't actually used Paladin that much. I know they have a heal and a shield though. I think they can only cast the shield on themselves. So yeah, let's pick up Raika Yuma, the Paladin. Sulaki is an Asari, and the special thing about Asari is they can reproduce with any gender or species. And yeah, they're tough and a psychopath. I feel like we want this person. She's pretty old, 844, but her life expectancy is a thousand, so that's not a problem. And yeah, we could pick her up for 1600. And to be able to afford both of them, we could sell off Raven and Hufishar. And though Hufishar is physically adept and definitely 
Dodger. She doesn't really like to do melee anyways. And then Raven is physically adept as well and good with animals, but we don't have any way to make Raven into an actual fighter right now. We need a class tome for that. And if one of the traders were to have it, it would cost like three care more anyways. And so yeah, I don't think we care about recruiting Savisius as well. Dude's pretty good, but I would rather pick up the other two colonists. And yeah, we'll just save Boxen. Do keep in mind though, if we do pick up two more colonists, the rage strength of our enemies is going to increase substantially. So there's that to worry about. But yeah, though, I'm actually kind of excited to see where this goes. I think this would be a really good spot to end the episode. And the next episode, we're going to deal with this Krogan raid, which I completely forgot about. The dude is going to be attacking immediately, but he is about to run into this toxic mushroom. So he should take a little bit of toxic damage. And yeah, we'll have to figure out a way to take this guy on in the next episode. With that, I do want to thank you all for watching and I will see you then.